Right, well this is uh, fairly important, so I'm going to give um, uh, another explanation using just um, diagrams. So let's suppose we've got um, a hierarchy of classes defined in the program, and um, they look something like this, say. So um, to start with, we're going to have to have um, object at the top because um, uh, everything is um, is uh, everything extends object in some form or another. So we've got object at the top, and uh, so we have a class A, which uh, extends object, and um, class B, which also extends object, and uh, let's say we've got um, C, which extends A, and uh, T, which also extends A, and then let's say we have um, X, Y and Z, which extend T, and uh, just for good measure, we have uh, V and W, which extend X. So we've got um, uh, a class hierarchy, say, which looks something like that. So everything on the right here is um, a hierarchy um, declared in the program. So it's, it says what class extends what. So we've got that. Now let's suppose we've got um, a variable of type t, so here we are, t, and uh, we've got a variable of this type there. Uh, now that variable can refer to any object whose class lies in this region here, so any class, any object whose class lies in that region there. And now it can never, under any circumstances, refer to an object whose class lies outside that region. Never, ever at all. Now, how do I know what an object's class is? Um, well, I know that because at some point I had to use the word new followed by the class name when I created it. And the class of an object does not change, it is fixed. Once you create it, that's it. And when you hear people talking about an object's type, what they mean is the class that was used to create it. That's really what they mean. Okay. So here we are. Let's have an object of class X. So um, somewhere or other we've done new and uh, new X and we've used that to create an object of class X. Now we can have T refer to it without any problem. So T can quite happily refer to that because well, it lies in that region there, so it's quite acceptable. Um, uh, we can also have um, a variable A of um, type A, like this. And uh, that can also refer to the same uh, uh, the same object. Uh, notice um, that A can refer to a bigger range of things than T. And if you look at what A can refer to, A can refer to anything which lies in here. Any object that is whose class lies in that region there. Uh, that's why you can say A equals T. You can say that without any problem because uh, that's a perfectly valid statement that you don't have to worry about any uh, anything being incompatible because A can refer to a bigger class of things than T. So anything that T points to is going to be acceptable to A because it's a bigger range. That's why upcasting like that uh, works. But supposing you want to say um, T equals A, well that's not acceptable. Um, uh, that gives a compiler error straight away. It won't allow you to do that. No, that's not acceptable. That's because A could refer to something there or there. That's not it. It's not acceptable. There's no way that those two 
anything of any object of class C or class A is not going to be acceptable to T. That would uh, that would violate that requirement. So that's that's why that's not allowed. But of course, if you if you cast it, of course, that's going to then work. So if you do something like T equals T of A, like that, that's quite okay. That will work, or at least that will get past the compiler. That's because when you do that cast, what you get is a runtime check to make sure that um, this thing that A refers to is actually going to be somewhere inside this region acceptable to T. So in this case, it's all right because um, X does uh, a, if A referred to X, uh, this object of type X here, that would be quite okay. Uh, otherwise, if it referred to um, something outside of that region acceptable T, you'd get a runtime error. Okay, so what's um, if we take a look at these the types of these variables there, A and, and that type there. So what is that used for? Well, uh, the type of a variable determines the methods in variables which can be accessed. So um, for uh, T, um, you can access anything um, available in this class through this class here. Uh, so anything that's available th through there. So uh, it could include things in uh, A or an object as well. Now, um, there may be some restrictions based on access rights and uh, things like that, but that's a secondary issue. Um, now, in particular, for example, um, uh, if there was some variable or method uh, that was unique to class X, um, you can't, uh, you could not get at it using variable t. So if there was some method unique to x, you couldn't say t dot followed by that method because even though t would point to this object of class x, that's still not going to be enough because the type of that variable is type t, so you can't access um, uh, methods which are unique to x using that variable. Uh, except of course you could cast it to type X but then of course if you cast you're going to get a runtime check to make sure that that cast is acceptable and of course it's only going to be acceptable if the thing that T points to is either of a class is either an object of class X or of course an object of class V or W because they are also acceptable Okay, so hopefully that's um, that's a bit clearer.